everyone. Um, welcome to the Clothier Design Source webinar series. Um, today, uh, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm Mindy Martell. I am the president of Clothier Design Source. Um, just a little bit about us. We are a clothing development company and we have a clothing factory here in the US, um, in Minnesota. And we specialize in um, developing and producing uh, small, you know, micro brands of clothing. Um, a lot of a lot of people that we help are startup companies. Um, not everyone is, but that's a big part of what we do. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, the the Clothier four-step process. So if you're, you know, making your own apparel line or thinking about doing it, this is these are the four steps you're going to need to take in order to make your clothing line a reality. Let's get started. Um, so the first thing I just, I just want to introduce is the four-step process. Um, and this is what we're going to talk about more in depth uh, throughout this webinar. Um, but just as an overview of what you're going to learn about today is step one, which is design. Um, and that's really finalizing the details of your product. So before you move forward, the first thing you need to do is really figure out what is your product going to look like and what is it made out of. And that's step one, design. Um, and then we've got step two, which is prototype. Um, and that's you know when you get to the fun part, when you actually start seeing your product. So that's when we're sampling your product um, and we're making it exactly how it's supposed to be while it's being manufactured and then it's, it enables you to test it. Um, you can market test it, functional test it, um, make sure everything's looking good before you move forward. Step three is tech design, again, which we're going to learn more about, and that is like creating a blueprint of your product uh, before you manufacture it to help control the quality. And then step four is manufacturing, which is pretty straightforward. That's when you actually make you know, multiple units of your product so you can start selling them. Okay, um, just a quick plug for our YouTube channel. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel. There's a ton of helpful videos up there. Um, again, I'm, I'm the owner of the company. I am pretty passionate about helping new apparel entrepreneurs succeed and really navigate the industry. So please check that out. Please subscribe. Um, there's a lot of helpful, helpful hints up there. All right, so let's um, jump right into it. So step one. Um, again, this is the very first step that you're going to need to take when you're developing any apparel product. So this step is essentially making sure that all the planning is done. Um, we like to spend a good amount of time on this step because the more proper planning that is done, the less time and money it takes to make, to, uh, make revisions and, and um, get get the process more streamlined and get to the right product right away. Um, so a little bit more about this. Uh, so it's, it's drawing your product. Um, really, that's a huge part of what step one is. We just wanna draw your product to understand how it's going to be constructed, um, exactly what it's gonna be made out of. Those are the two things we're trying to accomplish. Uh, this is a this is kind of a funky product I've got up here on the slide. This is a cycling bib, like a for um, cyclists, and this is a bib that they wear, you know, under their jersey. It has a lot of functional aspects to it. Um, so when we're working with our clients, we're asking you what you know what kind of product do you want? In this case, you know, they wanted a cycling bib. And then we go ahead and we start drawing up different options for them um, to start saying, oh, we could, you know, we can have this sort of mesh 
you can see there's mesh fabric in the back and to make it breathable there's an idea um it's got the chamois you know for the rider on the seat which makes the riding more comfortable um, we might talk about different ways to finish the armhole the neckline and so we're throwing ideas at our clients to help them um, understand what their options are and what we think would work really well for their product. Um, and every single line here is a panel line and it's a stitch line. So it's helping us understand what, how exactly is this product going to be built to. Um, when we present the design options to our client, then uh, we hold a design session to discuss those options. So we're going to walk through those options with you and, and describe to you what each what each stitch means, what each detail means, what each fabric means. And we're really relying on you as the business owner to make the decision on the final product, where we're going to present a lot of viable options for you and try to describe to you the you know pros and cons of, of each different design detail. Um, so then the goal is to get to a final illustration of each style before we can move on. And there's going to be a brief um, construction and trim details. So you can see over here on the side, we've, we've got kind of a stitch guide um, again, and we would walk through with you if you're unfamiliar with these, no problem. We would walk through with you what this means. Um, we've got different fabrics. You can see this particular product is going to have two different fabrics. Um, it's also going to have a trim, which is in blue down here. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean the product's going to be in blue down there. It's just rep showing representation that this is a different type of fabric than the rest of it. And then we've got it, even a, another type of trim and another trim. So this is just kind of planning out the project. Well, how's, it going to be, how's it going to look? How's it going to be made and what is it going to be made out of? Um, okay, so part of step one, what is it going to be made out of? Um, fabric sourcing. That's a huge, huge part of step one. Um, when you work with us, you know, going back to that um, cycling bib that I was just showing you, it showed there was going to be two different types of main fabrics. So if you are working with us, what we would do is we would present you a myriad of swatch options that would be appropriate for your garment for each type of fabric. So we know we wanted a mesh on the back that was breathable, and we know we wanted a um, compressive fabric on the rest of the bib. So then we're going to show you a whole bunch of mesh options and a whole bunch of compression options for the rest of the bib. And once we show you those options, um, and you know, we work remotely with a lot of our clients. Um, so it's, you know, we just mail you the options and here at, in our, um, in our offices, we have the same options. So we're looking at the same swatches as you, and we have a design session to discuss those options with you. Um, and we're giving you the pros and cons. We're telling you, you know, this mesh fabric, we chose it because we think it's absolutely perfect for your product. But the con might be it's uh, maybe this price point is a little high or uh, maybe we have to get it knitted custom. So it's going to be a month before it's available. So we might have a timeline issue. And then we might show you another mesh fabric that we're like, okay, this is going to be great for your product. It's completely appropriate. Um, it might not be as nice as this other option, but really good price points and we might be able to get five yards tomorrow. So there's, there's a lot of business decisions that need to be made that we're going to kind of guide you through your options and help you. And then once the final fabric selections are chosen, then step, well, step one is nearly done. We're also working in label design. Um, so again, it's just planning what kind of labels are going into it. Um, every garment has to have a label. When you manufacture it, it's the law. Um, so there's some things, legalities that we have to put in it when you're manufacturing, but then also you might want to think about for your brand, what kind of actual label is going to either get heat pressed in or sewn in. Um, so we're going to kind of walk you through that too and figure out what are your options and what kind of label needs to go in your product. 
And then step one is done. So uh, just to recap step one, step one is just what is it going to look like and what is it going to be made out of? Um, and that's, you know, down to what are the stitches going to be, what kind of fabrics, what kind of trims. So everything's being planned and selected. Um, and then we get to step two, which is the most exciting part of the process because that's when you start to actually see a physical product. Um, so before something can be sewn, there has to be a pattern. So that's a huge part of prototyping. Uh, if you're familiar with what pattern making is, um, it's just the shapes of the product that get cut out and sewn together. Uh, and we work in digital, um, so all of our patterns are digital, and you, the brand owner, will own the pattern when we are done with it. Nobody else can use that pattern. It is your pattern, um, and it's a universal you know, language, pattern making. And so what you can, you'll own that file, and if you end up manufacturing with us, we will use that pattern to manufacture, or you'll own it, and if you go to another factory overseas some day or somewhere else, that pattern is still yours. Um, it's a very important piece of property for your brand to own your pattern. Um, yeah, and it's essentially engineering. Um, you know, it, it is engineering. It's where we're taking the 2D flat fabric and we're, you know, figuring out those shapes that need to get cut out to make the product that will drape over a 3D body. So that's, you know, the first part of what we do in step one. And then of course, we start cutting and sewing. So we make the pattern, we've already selected the fabric in step one, and now we're cutting and sewing. Um, <clears throat> so when we're prototyping or when you're developing any new product, and this is actually uh, makes sense for any industry, not just the clothing industry, but hard goods or you know, any kind of product, you have to expect two to three reiterations before it's perfected. So um, let's, let's go back to that cycling bib in the first slide. Um, if, when we created that cycling bib, we created the pattern and we cut and sewed it, we created the prototype, we sent it to the client, the client was able to test it in some cycling, um, and then there were some tweaks. You know, you always are gonna have to expect some revisions. Um, and so one, you know, I would say two to three revision rounds is super normal in the apparel industry. Um, so just make sure you kind of work that into your expectations, work that into your timeline, um, and our design managers here will help you, you know, figure out what that means for timeline. But just remember, you're going, your first prototype very rarely is absolutely positively perfect and no changes are needed. Um, so just expect that. Um, and then when, when we're making a prototype, um, we're very concerned about making sure that that prototype is production friendly. Um, and, and, and the reason that matters is you aren't wasting that prototype on just getting a sample to see if it works and then say you want to place a production order. A lot of times a factory will have to start kind of all over again from the beginning and redevelop that product to make sure it can be manufactured. So when we're prototyping a product, we're making sure that it actually can be manufactured the way we are putting it together. We're putting it together in a manner that quality can be controlled, um, industrial machinery can be used, and we're making sure that uh, you know, everything can be repeatable and as affordable as possible because the steps we're taking to create it are, um, are efficient. Uh, you can go to a tailor or a, you know, a seamstress to get a prototype made. And sometimes that is, you know, an okay step. I just want to warn you, if you do go to a tailor to get a prototype made, um, when you come to a factory like us, you will have to start over because the tailor is not trained in production methods 
um, and you know making things in a production friendly way. So things kind of have to start over from the beginning um, and kind of be remade to make sure it can be manufactured. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so once we have a perfect prototype, so let's say we've made you know prototype one, you've got some feedback, we have to make a little bit of changes. We make prototype two and let's say prototype two is awesome. Like everything about it is absolutely perfect. You wouldn't change a thing if it went into manufacturing. Then we create the sizes and you know, let's say you're gonna offer small, medium, large and extra large in your product. Um, up till this point, we have only been prototyping in one size. Um, somebody, you know, a size that's easy for you to test. And then we go into grading. Um, and grading means creating the additional sizes. So, um, yeah, so the act of grading, it's just kind of a, a weird word for the apparel industry, but it's just creating the different sizes. And um, no two brands fit alike, as you've noticed, probably. So if you're ordering a size large in, you know, in one brand and then um, you go to the other brand and you realize you're a medium or you're an extra large. So we really work with you in deciding how you want your brand to fit, who are your demographics, and to make sure that, um, that all of the sizes are going to fit and you're not going to deal with returns on your brand. So grading is a really important step for products. Um, so after you have the grading done and we have one of every size made, then step two is done. So um, just to recap, step two is really just about getting the perfect prototype and getting all of your sizes made. Um, and I'm just going to interject a little bit in the middle of the webinar here. Uh, just a reminder, if you haven't heard of it, we do offer a, an academy for new apparel entrepreneurs. Um, we are holding one February 24th. It's an all day event. Um, you can learn more at our website, clothierdesignsource.com. Uh, and you just click on Academy at the top of the page. Um, so I just wanna extend that invite. We are giving away two free spots to the Academy. Um, you can enter an essay contest and that also is on the website. Um, otherwise there, you know, Otherwise, there's a fee and we do offer six classes um, and we're going to have lunch provided and we're gonna have a tour of our factory. So check it out. Um, if you can't make this one, we are gonna be offering it every quarter as well. All right, so on to step three, tech design. Um, so now you've got, you've designed your product. We know what it's gonna look like. That's step one. We have prototype. Step two, you have a prototype that's like absolutely perfect. It looks just like you're gonna use in manufacturing. And now we do step three, which is tech design, which is a series of documents that's basically a blueprint. So now that the fabric's been built, or I mean the garment has been built, we need to record all of the quality control parameters um, and all of the sizing specs and parameters. Um, all of the fabric parameters. So it's going to control a quality as it moves through manufacturing. Now, again, you own all of this, all of these documents, you as the brand owner. So you will own this tech pack, you will own the patterns, and it's, that's the package you need to go to a manufacturer to manufacture. Um, we have a factory here. So we hope you stay with us and manufacture, but it's really important as a brand owner that you own those, those items because then if you ever need to move manufacturers or you need to have two manufacturers of your brand, you have those quality control documents so each factory is doing the same thing. That, that's what makes it important. Um, yeah, and so it's listing the specs for the fabric and trims. It's listing things like fabric weight, trim finish, trim finishes, where is the label placed. It's just answering all of these uh, kind of unknown questions 
so there aren't any assumptions. So every factory is doing the exact same quality and the exact same construction. Um, it also includes points of measure, which are very important. Um, you can see at the bottom of this page, I believe this is a, a, a sports bra, technical design that is you know, kind of flattened out. Um, and we have all these red lines and then letters. So in the tech pack, this is like a diagram saying, for size small, this line B needs to be so many inches long. And for size medium, it needs to be this many inches long. And for size large, it needs to be this many inches long in order for it to fit properly. We also put in tolerances. So let's say, you know, this is 12 inches long for a size medium. We would put in a tolerance of, it could be plus or minus a quarter inch and that's acceptable. But anything beyond that, then production is going to be rejected, not acceptable. Um, and so that helps control your quality. It helps the manufacturer understand, um, you know, what you're expecting as far as quality and, and how to control your sizing. Another thing that's in tech design. Um, okay, I've got a quick question. What file types to provide the pattern and tech pack in? Good question. So the pattern we provide in D. DXF um, or AI or um, PDS. Um, this we I think I, we have at least ten options, but I know DXF is the most industry wide um, type of file that that pretty much any CAD system can read. And then the tech pack we provide in Excel and PDF usually in those two different, uh, two different file formats. Another thing that's in the tech, de tech design package is the construction methods. I think this is one of the biggest secrets in controlling the quality of your garment. Um, we use the International Standards Organization, which is ISO, stitching information. And the nice thing about this is every country of the world can read this chart whether you speak English or not um, this is a pretty standardized thing in the apparel industry one of the only standardized things there are but we indicate you know what type of stitch should be used so let's say this is a 101 um, this is also known as a single thread chain stitch it gives a picture of the top view bottom view and then the biggest secret is the SPI, which is the stitches per inch. Um, a really, really huge way to control quality is paying attention to and specifying your stitches per inch. Um, if you can imagine a, a sewer, so like just if you've seen a sewing machine work, it's like, you know, the needle goes in and it moves, right? So if you have really big stitches per inch, um, that needle moves further and they can sew faster the problem with that is that the garment's going to fall apart a lot quicker those stitches aren't going to stay together as well because you're taking less stitches they're really big um, so let's for instance let's say walmart has a very big stitches per inch their sewers can sew super fast um, and they're okay if the garment falls apart in a few washes um, if you're going for a really high quality garment, the smaller, there's a, you don't want to go too small, but if you have enough stitches per inch, so smaller stitches, that garment's going to be much stronger. It's going to hold together through a lot more wear and tear and washing. So I think this is the secret weapon for quality control. It's a lot of people don't know about it. So I, if you're about ready to design or launch, um, I would just, have a conversation and make sure you understand what your stitches per inch should be. And if you're working with us, you know, we're guiding you and making sure that the right stitches per inch are, um, are, are listed and required for your garment. All right, um, and then we're on to step four. 
So step four is manufacturing. Um, so you know now you've got you've designed your product, we've got a prototype, we've tested it, it's done in all the sizes, and now we've documented how it should be constructed, how it should be manufactured, and now you have that package, and now you're ready to manufacture. Um, and again, we have a factory here. Um, we produce around 6,000 units a month. Uh, we do ha have low minimums. Um, we require only 100 pieces per style, which is fairly low for the industry. If you go overseas, you'll start to find people are gonna want at least 1,000 pieces per style, and ideally 5,000. So, you know, if you're just kind of starting out, it's nice to be able to have the flexibility for those low quantities. Um, but yes, you, you just want to make sure that you own the pattern and you own the tech pack because a lot of people, when they go to work with a factory, um, they don't get those pieces of information from the factory. And so if you ever have to move factories, you're kind of SOL because you don't have the pattern or the tech pack. So you have to start all the way over from scratch with a new factory. So owning these things for your brand is a really good, valuable um, piece, pieces of information. Uh, just a reminder again, we have the Academy, um, February 24th. There are other ways to join the Academy as well, if you wanna check that out on our website. If you're looking to work with us, just you know, reach out to info at clothierdesignsource.com or you can call us, our number's on our website. Because um, the best way to really get some pricing from us, we offer 15-minute free consults. Um, really easy, really quick. We just want to ask you a few questions and get get to know get to know your garment a little bit and what what you're thinking of producing, and we can give you some pricing. I hope you're learning something. We're doing these videos to help apparel entrepreneurs succeed. I'm hoping these are helpful to you. If they are helpful to you, subscribe to our channel. Click the bell icon so you get notifications when we add more content.